Last year when you were with Sportsnet New York, mm -hmm. you had an interview with Dwayne Wade that went viral. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people on social media, they were focusing on like your physical appearance mm -hmm. instead of your skill set. Yes. And as the sports journalist with such a really wide skill set, do you feel like sometimes people look at you and focus on your looks instead of the contributions you're making? Yeah, I think that that's something that women in general have to deal with, is always being seen as a woman first and a journalist second or whatever the thing is that you do. Um, but the thing I always say is what that person thinks doesn't really have anything to do with me. You know, like it's not my responsibility to make you feel comfortable with the way that I look. It doesn't matter what I wear. I, you're gonna see that like I'm a woman and I have breasts, I have a butt, I have hips, like that. that's just, it's going to be a part of it. And how mature of a person are you going to be able to look past that and hear what I say? I'm so much more concerned with what I'm saying than how I look. And the thing, the only reason that it would sometimes get frustrating is like, I have such a good interview here, but you're so focused that you can't hear it. Like you're so focused on what you see that you are not focusing on things that I'm saying. But the right people that need to hear it always do. Um, and that's what I think is most important. The more that you just keep doing good work and good work and good work, it will be hard to ignore the fact that you're doing good work. And that's what I really always tell myself. And also, social media isn't to me the most indicative measure of what is happening, right? So I have a whole bunch of people on social media are saying, dang, she looked good in those red pants, or oh, look, I was looking at her. Like, that's a small group of people that feel that way. Social media is just so loud that it feels like the only thing. Um, and I would caution just ever getting too caught up in just like that pool of people. And I never do that, which is why like, I don't really let it get me down that much. But I do think it's important to understand that like women are so much more than what you see. And people tend to put women into boxes, you know? So if somebody sees me and they think, okay, like she's pretty, they will then think, okay, I'm putting her in the pretty box and then she can only be pretty and they only want to give you that one adjective when you can also be like smart and kind and caring and funny and nice and and powerful like we are all more than one thing we're multi-dimensional women can be anything that they want so to get caught up on just the appearance to me is just like shows a very small-minded person um, to think that you can't be just or you, that you can only be that. And that's what I probably tell myself when things like that happen. Gotcha. In news media, fashion, Hollywood, there's been an ongoing discussion about black women and their hair and their mm -hmm. makeup and beauty and what's considered acceptable. Have you faced any challenges where you've been on set somewhere and you haven't had someone who's been able to style your hair properly? Mm -hmm. Because a part of the debate is the fact that there's not a lot of people in these institutions that are familiar with different hair textures. Mm -hmm. And you know, as women of color, we have a wide variety of different textures. Mm -hmm. Have you come across any experiences like that? Yeah, well, I'd say knowing that those experience ex experiences exist, I have had to do things to try to avoid those experiences, right? Like there is one person who does my hair. His name is Armand, he is fantastic. Um, but it's like, I'm always having to say, hey Armand, can you do my hair this day? So I'm going to go on set and I need to make sure that's done right. Whereas people who don't look like me can just go to the set and know that someone will know how to do their hair. So even though I haven't gone and experienced someone not being able to do my hair, it's because I'm having to take way more steps than anyone else just to be okay in that space. You know, I don't have a perm, my hair is natural. Um, so it's very important that it's somebody who understands you just have to wash my hair and blow dry. You don't have to do too much. I think sometimes people see black hair, I think they gotta do too much to make it work. Um, but I, I totally understand that like struggle that we have. I always, when we're thinking of makeup artists, I'm like, have they done black skin? Like, do they understand? And it's important that we get more people of color in those spaces because we can do everybody. And it has to be inclusive. Beauty has to be inclusive. Um, so I'm, I'm very thankful and very fortunate that I have someone who knows how to do my hair. I'm fortunate that I have a makeup artist at work who is fantastic with my face. But yeah, the bigger discussion is people who are not of color, like white people have to understand that they can go here and be fine. And that's a privilege. 
to know that you can go somewhere and know at least one person will know how to do your hair and makeup. We're always worried about it, and it's not right that we have to worry about it all the time. Um, and I hope that we continue to see more progress in that as the years go on.